you could just stand with me please and we'll turn our Bibles to Job chapter 23, 1 to 11. Job chapter 23, 1 to 11. Just greet everyone in the precious name of Jesus. Happy to see you today, Brother Ryle. God bless you. Job chapter 23, 1 to 11. Okay. You have it? After 2, 1, 2. Then Job answered and said, Everybody, can we read it together? Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead me his great power? No, but he could put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, but I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. And today I just want to share with you on the topic, don't give up on God. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. And for my text, I just want to focus in on verse 10. When he asked me to speak on one of my favorite um, scriptures, to be honest with you, this is one of the scriptures I'm holding on to by faith that God will fulfill it in my life. Verse 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he had tried me, I shall come forth as gold. And I've looked up a few versions just to see what is this verse saying. Easy to read says, but God knows me. He is testing me and, uh, and will see that I am pure as gold. The Living Bible says, but he knows every detail of what is happening to me. And when he has examined me, he will pronounce me completely innocent as pure as solid gold. The message version says, but he knows where I am and what I've done. He can cross-examine me all he wants, and I'll pass the test with honors. I've followed him closely, my feet in his footsteps, not once swerving from his way. I've obeyed every word he's spoken, and not just obeyed his, as, his advice, I've treasured it. The amplified, amplified version says, but he knows the way that I take. He has concern for it. He appreciates it and pays attention to it. He, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as refined gold, pure and luminous. I've just been reading this week about a steel mill. There are equipments and instruments testing their limits and breaking points. Because of the testing, the manager of the mill knew exactly how much stress and strain each piece of steel could endure. If it was used to build a ship or building or bridge. So in like manner, we are going through our different tests and tried through the fire. But this is not to kill us, but to mature us and to make us more into God's likeness. I just wanted to look at a summary of Job's life, because this scripture is 
take, is taken from Job and just wanted to see all that Job had been through. God allowed him to be directly, directly attacked by Satan. He is an example of faithfulness as he loses everything important to him, yet remains faithful. Its purpose is to illustrate God's sovereignty and faithfulness during the time of great suffering. In one day, he lost his livestock, his children, and servants. He still blesses God in praise. Job is afflicted with boils. His wife encourages him to curse God and give up and die. But Job refuses, struggling to accept his circumstances. His three friends share their views on his affliction. One of the things about this scripture, you remember I said to you, it's, my favorite, it's one of the favorite scriptures I have falling on to now. And it's even just the first part. For he know it. He know it. God knows. He knows everything about your situation. He knows everything about what you're going through. And even sometimes I, I can't even explain anything to God, but I just say, God, you know. God, you know. You know? So it's, to me, it's comforting just to know God knows. The omniscience of God is that attribute by which he knows all things in the past, in the present, and in the future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Psalms 139 verse 3 says, Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. In Isaiah 53 verse 3, it says, He, he, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And, and when I think about this scripture as well, it's like an architect saying, You know what? I have a plan here. All they have is the, uh, is the plan. But they're saying to you, I know this building. You know, it, to you, it don't make sense. How come before something is even created, you're saying you knew? I'm just telling you the level that God knows us. Before we were even formed, God knew us. He knew what we would be going through. And sometimes like David, in Psalms 13 verse 1, we, 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 we sometimes reach to that point where we are saying, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Strategies in enduring hard and difficult times. And the answer to that is in verse 11, which says, My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. So the strategies I'll give to you today is keep trusting God no matter what. Be determined not to serve any foreign God. And just like how Job had him, him friend, in friends who came to visit him, and they have a lot of suggestions to him. I'm sure when people see you going through this, they, they will come and say, oh, sister me, try this other remedy. Try this other thing. Try this other, you know, they want to give you some other thing to try. But I am saying to you today, trust God no matter what. No other remedy, no other substitute will do. The scripture says in Psalms 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord, our God. Hold on to the promises of God that relates to your situation by faith and believe God to fulfill it. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. 3. Keep on being faithful in what God has called you to do. Four, be consistent in prayer, reading the word and thanking God in advance. 
five, encourage others. I want you to listen to this. Encourage others, even when you yourself need encouragement. It's very difficult, but I am learning that for my own self. Sometimes I need encouragement, but God is leading me to encourage somebody. And by me making the extra effort, I am finding that God is even strengthening me as I help somebody else. What was the result for Job? Even though he couldn't find God, he held his integrity in God. He feared God and avoided any evil. Job maybe tried to pray and just couldn't feel the presence of God. He, but he did not give up. He kept God's commandments. He held on to God's word when no one understood what he was going through. He knew what it was to feel judged or feeling like things just can't get any worse than this. He longed to even die. He wondered why God let wicked people prosper and God's people suffer. He grew impatient and afraid. But Job intercede, interceded on behalf of his friends. And, for, and God forgave them. God returned to Job his health, providing him twice as much property as he had before. New children and an extremely long life. Going through the difficult time or loss, sickness and tragedy is not always pleasant. You haven't got over one thing before the other one comes on. Sometimes you feel swamped, overwhelmed, and alone. Nobody understands what you're going through. But be faithful to God. I am learning that it is a process for gold to be refined from the raw estate, from the raw state to the refined gold. The goldsmith keeps his eye on the gold through this process, until he can see his image in the goal. I don't know where you are in the process, but coming out prematurely would mean that you will be incomplete and you will not be able to experience the beauty and the wonder that God has for your life. God brings us to our lowest before he brings us to our highest. The reason God lets these things happen in our lives is to help us to grow in him. Somehow, some good is coming out of this. As in Romans 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. In the midst of every adversity, every difficult situation, we can learn from Job. Don't give up on God. Don't backslide. Don't give up praying and blessing your enemies. Hold on to the promises of God. Isaiah 55 verse 1 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. In God's time, in the fullness of time, God will turn it around for you. You are going to be a wonder to many. Trust also in God and he will bring it to pass in your life. When God is finished with polishing you up, your entire life would, would just reflect his glory and his goodness. That makes others marvel. The hotter the battle, the sweeter the victory. Honor God and he will honor you. Hard times don't last. And your season is subject to change in Jesus' name. Don't give up on God. He is working it out for you. And you will come through as, poor, as pure gold. God bless you. If someone had told me last year that I would be in front of you speaking, I wouldn't believe them. And I just thank God for that.
I'm going to speak to you on my, my favorite scriptures. There are a few, but I'm going to focus on one. Psalms 35, verse 1. Plead my case, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight with me. And Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 139, verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 2 Timothy verse, uh, ch chapter 1, verse 7. For God had given us has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And this one was in my heart when we had our old year service. And we were asked to come up, but I didn't feel confident to go and speak. But it was just in my heart. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of the Lord who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. The word peculiar in, in today's terms means odd, strange, or unusual. However, when the King James Version was translated, peculiar was referred to, used to refer to something belonging to someone. Peter was not saying we are odd even though in today's society we may be classed as such. People think of us as strange. Some people, not all of them, think of us as strange. We are perceived as strange. He meant that Christians belong to God. We are his own possession, his own very special people. Those that are born again are different from non-believers. They are transformed by the Holy Spirit and the belief in Christ for their salvation. We have received the right then to be called the children of God and so are joint ears with him. I love this scripture because it declares that we are chosen generation. He selected us. We are descendants of Abraham. And I was doing some more reading this morning. It says in um, Genesis chapter 17, verse, verse 4. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And I recall the song we used to sing in Sunday school, Father Abraham had many sons, I am one of them. And so I used to let's just praise the Lord. We are descendants of Abraham. We are royal priesthood, a holy nation, ear to God's kingdom. God is the head of the church and when we are born again, we become priests through our personal relationship with Christ. We are members of, there are many members of God's body in the world that makes up the holy nation. We are peculiar. We are very special people. Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 21 said, The people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. I am grateful and my heart is full of thankfulness for him, for setting me apart for himself. But God doesn't just want us to stand within his courts and, and praise him. and take, He wants us to take the gospel out into the world and tell others what he has done for us because he surely will do and can do the same for them if they give their lives to him. Amen. When I am feeling down this, this verse, he encouraged me knowing that I am of a very honorable race. Amen. I am heavenly offspring, Amen. the seed of Jesus Christ, a child of God. However, the verse not only reminds us of who we are, he said that he said, I would be of who we are and what we would be. Even before we were born, like Sister Pearl said, he knew us before we were born. But he also reminds us of what he wants us to do for him. Go and proclaim his glory. And in the, the message version of this is, but you are the ones chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him. 
to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. And I, I want to do better than what I am doing. I need to do better than what I am doing because he, he has set me apart, made me, I am Princess Morgan, child of the king. And at work, there's this young lady that she said she doesn't believe in God. Sometimes I have to explain to her when she says she's going to heaven. I said, no, you're not. And I have to tell mommy, I have to explain to her when she says she died, she's going to paradise. I said, no, you're not. I tell her, you don't believe. And I have to explain to her that in hell what happens and in heaven what happens and that when people die and say, oh, they're in heaven. They're not in heaven. Mm -hmm. And when, when something happens or as an account, yeah, doing accounts and when you get something balanced, I just I say, thank you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I hear her saying it. <laughs> like Kenji always say, thank God. And I say, yes. <laughs> Slowly, but surely. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. This afternoon, I'm expounding on Psalms 27, verses 1 to 3. It's a very popular chorus, and it's my confident breaker, um, source of confidence, my comforter. That the words, sorry, Psalms 27, verse 1 says, that the word, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? I can count on this scripture to be a source of comfort to me. As in the past, I have been where darkness prevailed. So my light was the Lord. When trouble comes my way, the wall seems to close around you. It closes around everyone around you. You can't hear anything. It's that blank back screen there where there's nothing. You can't hear anyone praying for you because you're so consumed with fear. Brethren, the Lord is my light. Amen. He is my salvation. Amen. Why should I be afraid? I shouldn't be. He said it in his words. Um... You know what? There seems to be no hope sometimes when you have fear. And your physical eyes are closed. You see darkness because there's no light. But when your spiritual eyes are closed, you only have to open them up to the Lord. You know what? The word says, Call on the elders when you are sick, that they may anoint, pray for you and anoint you. And brethren, when we are sick, we cannot pray. We become starved. Because we're worried about what is going to happen, what the doctor is going to say, what's going to happen to my family, what's going to happen to this, what's, we're worried about the worldly thing instead of what is spiritually there for us. We're not looking forward to that heavenly realm here. We're looking forward to worry about what's here. Don't worry about what's here. Focus on the Lord and he will direct your path. Amen. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, The word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. And in the past, I've seen it where if my focus was not on the Lord, thus would have been the difference. If I was not focused on the Lord as being my light and my salvation, where would I, why Ethelin would have been? And I have to give God thanks this day for where he has brought me from. The second part of verse 1 says, The Lord is the strength of my life. There's some things in our lives that either make you or break you. And you know one of the greatest things is sickness. When we go to the doctor because of a little ailment, we wonder, when we do a test, what's the outcome going to be? Is it for the worst? Is it, is it something I can handle? We don't know. And we start to panic. We start to let our, our mind. You see that devil there? You start to put all kinds of things in your mind. It's going to be the worst. 
it's going to be the worst. And you, you, don't, you don't have that faith anymore that things are going to be good. You, you're thinking, this, oh, no, 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 it's going to be the worst. But you know what, brethren? Call on the elders when we are sick. Call on the elders when we are sick. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Look forward to him. We have to be focused on him. No matter what it is, the word is, he is our light and he is our salvation. We must focus on him. 2 Timothy, verse 1, 7 says, The Lord did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of, of another sound mind. Brethren, it is hard to tell you standing there, standing here right now, that you will not be afraid when you hear sickness come. I have had it. Most of us have had it. And no matter what we say, we can go on our knees and pray, but blankness hits you. You hit a wall that you can't pray. What are you going to ask the Lord? Is he going to answer you? Is he? Of course he will. But we, didn't, we don't think about that when we go on our knees and we worry at the back of our mind. I have to go get the test results. Oh, what are the doctor's going to say? What is he really going to say? We don't know. We ask the Lord that the results will be fine. It will be favorable in our sight. And that's all we need. But in our minds, we don't think it that way. That block comes up. That wall comes up. And we need to push past that wall and let the light shine through. That light of Jesus Christ. His word is a light. His word is a lamp. Why should we fear? Why should we in ourselves fear when he's already given, his, given us his word? No word that he has given will go back to him void. And we need to know that. I need to know that. And even though at times I panic, I am confident that his word will be true and will come true. And I have accepted it in life. I've seen where the situation has come about me. And if it wasn't for that word, that the Lord is my life and my salvation. Why should I, why should I be afraid of what my bosses say? Why should I be afraid that it wouldn't give me right? The Lord, the, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Why should I worry? He giveth bread and he taketh. And if he closes the door, he will open another one. And brethren, that is what we have to live for. When I look at verse 27, I think about David. When David faced... Um, was in here the fields and he had to protect his flock. He was just a mere boy. Now imagine a boy against a bear or a lion. You can't, you, you would basically you would in your pants because there's it's just a fear ahead of you. I look at it as David being given the power by God to defend his sheep. And when the uncircumcised Philistine giant, Goliath, said to him, he will take his flesh and feed it to the fowls of the ear and the beasts of the field. He never knew that the power of God would have been in that little boy. And today I am taking that power within me. That anything and everything, sister, you fell. But you know what? God was there bringing you right up. He was right there bringing you up. He's showing this young man, no matter how you fall there, there's a God ahead of you. And he will not make your situation any worse than how it's supposed to be. And it's an evidence that you're here today and you're not going on. We know why you're here. Your days are still here. Amen. Praise the Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We live in a time where every situation that happens seems to just get us down. Employers want to meet more and more targets. We know that. They don't want to pass anything. We are falsely accused of something. But God is in the midst of everything. No matter what. That person may accuse you for a reason. It's to push you on and on to something else better. Yeah. When you think that, oh my, I'm not going to get out of this my replay. Oh, that rock. Lead us to the rock of salvation. It's higher than them. It is higher than them. They are worldly things. We're looking for heavenly things. Yeah. Heavenly things. Yeah. Heavenly things can be set. Those things there on earth. The, world, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We have, when there are times when we have nothing and no one seems to understand anything that's going on in your life, brethren, God is there. 
He is that light. He is that light. Focus your, your concentrate on that light, and He will direct your path. And that is all that we can live for. There are times when you look at it and you say, I, I have it in my life, so that I can give a testament to the things that has happened that one after the other, this is happening one after the other, the other, and it just keeps to fall all around you. What can you do? What can you do? This is not happening. That's not happening. No matter how you turn to this door, nobody there can help you. You turn to this door, nobody there to help. What are you going to do, sister? What should you do? Should you turn your back? No. no, you can't turn your back. You have to look forward to the word. And if we don't, if we don't go in that word there, what are we going to do? You know what? I could tell you, I've had a stroke, and I've never said it to anyone before, but it has affected my brain. It has affected my speech. It's the Daisy Notes. But you guys don't know to what degree. I forget things, and it's only now that I realize how much it actually, how much it's actually affecting me. There are things, there are scriptural things that I can forget and I want to get the word and I can't. I could go in this Bible now and there's something in there, I can't remember it. Brethren, I'm not getting, just getting all my brain has been affected and I'm asking the Lord today, today to heal it. Because you know what, I want to work for him. I need to work for him. I need to have the word in me. I need, I see where my need is. And I want him to put it in me, brethren. I can't believe it. When I sat down the other day and wrote something and went back to read it, I could, I could not bring it up. I couldn't, and I know I, because I've written it here, and I've had it here. I said, I think you've done it more than once. Do it again, do it again. And I couldn't, brethren. I'm standing here telling you I'm a person. I love to speak free. Looking here confuses me. And I couldn't remember. And the Lord, take that blockage away from me. I'm looking through your light. You are my salvation. I'm not taking that. I'm not taking it down. I'm not taking it. It has given me a block in my employment. But I still believe that something is better there for me. This is it. My speech will come clear. It will be clear. And if it's not clear for them, it will be clear in the house of the God. It will be clear in this house. And I'm declaring it today. And I'm believing it today. That he is going to make my speech be perfect. And I'm a testament today. That my speech will be clear in the name of Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.